Well, for a sunny, beautiful day, Sarah and I have on our sunglasses. And Sarah, we're going to talk all about herbs today because it's that time to start getting them planted so we can cook with them. Yes, and they're, I think, the best addition to any garden because people can use them for not just decoration, but also fresh cooking. Yum, yum. You know what it does, like you said, um, I, I, it kind of inspires you. Yeah, it challenges you when you plant something to, to try to use it in a dish or um, you know, maybe just come up with new recipes oh, that fun. you hadn't had thought of. So that's how I use it. And um, I just planted a big herb garden last year and it's been growing amazing. Excellent. And um, it's been a lot of fun to try to do different things. And we had a really hard time narrowing it down to <laughs> these herbs because they're just all amazing. They're all, you know, we're used to cooking with all of them. So what do you want to start with? Um, let's start over here with the thyme. That's kind of your classic herb, obviously. Um, we've got a trailing herb there, um, the foxley, and then lemon thyme, which smells oh. kind of like Fruit Loops, I think. It does. <laughs> um, that's one that I planted. And um, so those are great for chicken and, you know, people know how to use thyme. But, all um, right. And then parsley. I think you kind of forget about parsley. You do. And that's actually one of my favorites because I throw that in um, like chicken noodle soup Ooh. and it really gives it a much different flavor than you can get from a dried uh, leaf. And then I freeze up chicken noodle soup ahead of time in the fall for <laughs> the winter when we're all sick. And um, <laughs> it's one of my favorite things to make. Excellent. And then this ferny one. Yeah, fennel. Um, it's, I haven't used that one myself, but apparently it can be used for not just cooking, but also, I guess, like um, a flea in, insect deterrent? repellent. Yes. Yeah, insect yeah, repellent that was and whatnot. And then my other favorite one that looks like that is dill. Oh. Um, I use that all the time on like some foil packet, you know, um, steel head and a little bit of lemon, garlic, and dill, and it's amazing, easy cleanup. Um, and then this is a pretty one. So it's nice to put pretty ones in too, but this has a, a, a use. Yes, both of these are a sorrel and you can, they're kind of a spicy green. So you throw them in salads. And I mean, that just pops when you have a salad. And then um, as you were mentioning too, which I didn't know that basically all of the herb flowers you can mm -hmm. just throw in as decoration. I never thought of that, but that's, it's so fun to eat a salad and see the, you know, colorful, um, flowers Extras, and whatnot. Definitely. And then this little one right here, what's that? That is tarragon. Mm. It's super popular. You can use it for a bunch of different things, but it's very tender. So we get people coming back all the time mm. that their tarragon died. So make sure and, and wait to plant it until it's the really nice weather out. I love it in, in vinaigrettes. Yeah, yeah. And then rosemary is, I think, an ornamental and an edible. Yes, definitely. I was looking through um, the other day at some shrubs and notice hey that's a rosemary and it you know has the really nice blooms this is my favorite one arp because i think it has good flavor for cooking but i like the upright rosemary uh, nice. a lot of people like the trailing but mm -hmm. i i really like the upright uh, especially in an herb garden because not much else gives you that height mm -hmm. uh, and then the epizote uh, we've got here which can be used in some latin dishes and nice. um William was saying that the trick to that is pinching off the leaves to the smaller the leaves, the better, I think. And That's keep using them. Yep. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, we've got a lot of sage, lots of different kinds of sage. So Look we've got the Burr Garden, which I would consider kind of your classic sage. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty intense flavor for me. Um, as our most sages. You can just use a little, it goes a long way, I think, yeah, too. Yeah, just being careful with it. And then a purple sage here, which is beautiful, pretty. a little more mild. And then this is a pineapple sage, which is extremely, extremely popular. This doesn't smell like sage at all. It doesn't. It's um, got a fruity flavor um, and bright red flowers. So it's a great dual plant. Uh, people use it all the time for, you were saying fruit salad. Yeah, I like to put it on fruit salad. And then um, cocktails. Oh, uh, that's another great so, one, for, especially for summertime. Yeah, and then it's just pretty, hummingbirds love it. So it's yeah. really popular for a hummingbird garden. Uh, and then the golden sage, which is just a different um, different color. So you've got some contrast with all these things. And um, again, we didn't even talk about like mint or cilantro or lemongrass oh, and, and lemon verbena. So um, just herbs are the best. Well, your stores <laughs> really have a big selection. So really go to the Division Street store or the Stark Street store and pick them out. You really can have so much fun and you can do it on a container or in a bed. Oh yeah, that was the other thing. Um, yeah, because small spaces are great. You can fit a few of them in a like flower box. 
but I see people all the time planting them too close together. So okay. just give them the room to grow and don't try to grow them inside because no. it, it's, it's not going to work out very well and then people get discouraged. Yeah. So they need to be outside, they need to have a lot of sun. Yeah. Well, on a sunny day, it's a great idea to come out to Portland Nursery, wear your sunglasses, and go to the herb selection and pick them out for your garden or your container. Thanks so much, Sarah. Thank you.